Mum, it's early. What are you doing? Oh, did I wake you up? Have you cleaned? I just did the washing up, now I'm doing the surfaces. Well, I thought you'd be, um, too experienced to get cold feet. Experienced? If what you mean is old, then you can come out and say it. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Look, I'm sure everything's going to be fine. Yeah. So when's the hairdresser coming? In about five hours. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. The funny thing about it being your own do is you've got to make sure that you talk to everybody and you thank everybody for coming. Which is kind of strange, really, because the last thing that you get to do is to talk to everybody that you really like. Now, yeah, so I reckon it's going to be a good day today, isn't it? OK, so I, I don't know Jane that well, but I think if everybody else is going to be there, then it's going to be a bit like a big party, really. <laughs> I was thinking last night, you know, we could actually think of this as a bit of a, a, bit of a warm-up to the main event, which I think is great, because we're nearly ready. We've got everything there. What do you reckon? Absolutely. How can you eat that? How can you not? So I suppose you're really looking forward to this wedding then, Steve? Yeah. One of those boring speeches. Mm-hmm. I love them. <laughs> and the terrible DJ. Can't wait. But, unfortunately, juicy calls. Mm. Yeah, you're going to pick me up there. One o'clock. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sure. See, See you me. later. Okay. Right, I'm off. Are you sure you're going to be OK? I'll be fine. Oh, uh... Before you go, I just want to thank you for everything you've done. Not only for looking after David, but I, I know how you felt about him. I'm glad it's all sorted out. He thinks the world of you, and so do I. I'd better go. I'll see you at the registry office. I think I'm going to have a quick go at the kitchen floor before the hairdresser shows up. Day then. How's your mum? Nervous. Have you spoken to David? Not recently. But you sorted things out. We talked. And is everything okay? Look, you know what I said about me and David? It's strictly confidential. Yeah, just. Well, I don't even want to talk about it. Not today, okay? Fine. Well, I just thought, you know, if you do want to talk to someone, then you know where I am. Thanks, but can we leave it now? The whole subject. Consider it left. Hiya. Um, just wanted to check that you're OK about holding the fort this afternoon. It's emergencies only, so you shouldn't be very busy. It's fine. These have to get in here one way or another. So I've got something to keep me out of trouble. Oh, what is your problem? You were doing it a minute ago. I'll leave it to you. Have fun. Helen, hmm? they smell fear. Morning, campers. These for me. Lovely. You on drugs? Try again. Early morning bedroom fun. It's quite simple. He's in love. Yes, and I thoroughly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone called for you, Mrs. Francis. Doesn't ring any bells. What did she want? I'm not sure. I think it was personal. Hiya. Yeah. Is Jane wearing to go? Oh, I suppose so. Let's say the kitchen's never looked better. <laughs> Mrs. Robinson. What's wrong with her? Oh, she's a bit, you know, um, on edge. Well, I suppose it is a bit unusual, the toy boy aspect, you know? Quite. <laughs> so I think we should keep things a little low-key. Steve? You got my message? I did phone. Um, yeah. How are you? Well, I hear you're leaving us. Yeah, um, should we go and talk in my office? What's that all about? I think that was Mrs. Francis. Uh, Bev's mother, um, Steve's first wife, but it's been quite a while. So what am I going to do with his patients? Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll take the first one. Uh, Mrs. Higgs?
Hello? Hello, who is this? David? I'm sorry, I should have called. But I was passing and, well, I thought I should pop in. I popped into that young girl, your receptionist. Jo. Yeah. That's it. And she told me all about what's been happening, you getting married, moving on. Yeah. Um, I should really have sent you an invitation. Don't be silly. Your late wife's mother at your wedding, people would talk. <laughs> How's Frank? He's fine. Still obsessed with the garden and that woman from the television. She does that terrible programme with that funny little man. What's her name? Charlie Dimmock. That's it. You don't watch it? No. Busy, really. Of course. And I hear you've got a new job. Nottingham or something. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine from college. Uh, you remember David Batty? Well, he's offered me a partnership. It uh, sounds great. It's Attached to a university, so there's a big sports medicine thing, you know. Yes. You and your football. I remember Bev used to be home every Sunday complaining she never saw you. If it wasn't work, you were out somewhere, kicking a ball about. Anyway, I mustn't take up all your time. The multitude are waiting. I just wanted to wish you luck with everything. What's her name? Lee. Well, give her my best. I'm sure Bev would have approved. No, I'm sure she'd be delighted to know that you're doing so well. Sorry, Steve. I was just going. <laughs> Goodbye, Steve. I hope everything works out for you. Goodbye, Catherine. <laughs> give my best to Frank, yeah? Mm. Hello, Dr. Powers. David. Look, we've already talked about this and I don't see that there's any point. OK, yes, I'll try and get away. I don't know as soon as I can, OK? Bye. Coffee? I'm all right. What did Bev's mum want? Uh, apparently she saw Joe in town. Came in to wish me good luck with the job. Lee, you know. Bit of a blast from the past. Mm. Left me feeling guilty, really. Well, she seemed friendly enough. Mm. Well, she wasn't having a go. She was just, well, like she always is. It's just I feel like I've, I've let her down. Do you know what I mean? Look, all you've done is get on with your life. If we're going to get to church on time, we should go now, yeah? Actually, I'm going to make my own way there. I've got a couple of things to sort out. Yeah, OK. Well, anyone seen Caroline? I thought I was supposed to be giving her a lift. Uh, she's probably keeping Jane on the straight and narrow. Uh, OK, well, see you there, Steve. Yeah, see you there. Well, I thought we could save a bit of time if we went by the supermarket, yeah? Yep, I'm right behind you. Take that. You'll follow me, yeah? Right, let's go. Good. Uh, come in. Have they gone? Oh, eventually. Mac was in charge. Anyone would think it's a South Pole rather than five miles across Leatherbridge. Well, I think he feels nothing would happen around here without him giving it the green light. Have you said anything to him yet? About? Those girls aren't going to give up, you know. If they think they can get drugs here, they're just going to keep coming back. So what am I supposed to do, march up to Mac and admit everything? Well, all I'm saying is it's going to be better coming from you. If they think you're a soft touch, they're just going to keep on trying. Well, he's gone now. I'll speak to him about it tomorrow. What about Helen? <laughs> the ice maiden? You must be joking. Yeah, it's basic psychology after the Joe thing. I mean, she didn't know about any of that. Well, not until we all did. So if you go to her instead of Mac, give it the old I can talk to you stuff, then she's got one up on the boss. Fifteen all. And if I take her a cup of tea first... You're evil. Oh, I prefer to call it experience. On second thoughts. Uh, 
She's in a good mood. Oh, yeah. Come in. Tea. Oh, thanks. Thank <laughs> you as well. Everything all right out there? Oh, yeah, but um, empty. Are you busy, then? What's wrong with you? Oh, the computer. Oh. Uh, only, um, Candy said I should have a word with you. Oh, yeah? It's, um, delicate. Can I assume by the fact you've brought me a cup of tea that I'm not going to like it? So, do you want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I need to speak to you before, uh, well, before this goes any further. Look, you know how I feel about you. Something happened between us. Nothing happened. That's not true. I didn't come here to listen to this again. Two people got drunk. Two people who should have known better, and that was it. Yeah, well, that's not how it felt for me. Oh, come on, Caroline, I'm in love with you. you... I, I can't think about anything else. I've tried, but... Well, now I don't see how I can go through with all this. Not now. Because it's you I want. No. Look, do you want me to spell it out to you? It doesn't matter what you feel, because I just don't love you. OK, we slept together, because I was weak, stupid and lonely. I don't know it happened, but that is it. I don't believe Look, you. will you stay away from me? Caroline! You don't get it, do you? It's over. Finished. You're wrong. Look, just because something's hard, it doesn't mean it isn't there. No. This just can't happen. No matter what you say or do. It just isn't possible. Everything's possible, Caroline. It just depends how hard you want it. No, we can't. Let me get my head round this. These girls, they've been here. Just the once, but, but I told them to go. I think they thought I could get them things. What things? Prescriptions, drugs. Because they know you're au fait with that kind of activity? After everything that's happened here, what was going through your head? Right now, we can't even give someone aspirin without special permission from Alan Milburn. But that's why I thought you should know about it before anything else happened. Have you told anyone else? No, I, I, I thought I should come to you first, rather than Dr Maguire. Because, of course, he'd hit the roof and keep going. What makes you think I'll be any different? I don't know. I, I, I feel I can talk to you. I'll have to think about this. If they come back again, I want to know about it. And I mean straight away. First priority is to nip this in the bud. And then we'll think about how to deal with the, the situation, OK? Thanks. And you and I will be talking about this again. You'd better get ready. For what? Because that was goodbye. And I think we both know it. I'll see you at the registry office. Well, we're here, aren't we? And are we late? No, we're not. So what's the problem? The problem is we just wasted 20 minutes going down the A38 the wrong way. You look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Where's the condemned man? <sighs> Cutting it fine. Well, he's probably just got held up. I mean, you know, the traffic's awful. Yeah, it's the ring road. Lots of lorries, trucks. Sure. Exactly. Should we go in? Yes. Natalie? What are you doing? It's OK. I'll text you later. See you later. She's near a bit at school. Lunchtime. 
You do let us eat, you know. Right. And smoke? I thought you were supposed to be at this wedding thing. The fishery. So what's the story? I thought you were looking forward to the speeches and the DJ. Yeah, well, I just like that. Just like that. And there was me thinking you were Mr. Reliable. Well, it's, um, Joe, I'm not really interested then, isn't it? Whatever it is. Catherine Francis came to see me. Bev Spong. Your wife, right? And they got killed. She wanted to wish me luck with a new job, that sort of thing. Bev and I used to come here. Just to walk here. It was a Sunday thing. Sort of tradition, really. I used to come for lunch. She used to bug me about getting her a yacht. Depends <laughs> everything. You're not going to let me get away with this, eh? Hey? I just don't get it. I thought you were the one who was dead set on moving on. I was. I am. Oh, I don't know. Just seeing Catherine. Got a few things home. I've been trying to picture her face, her face, and a card. I don't even remember her voice, anything. So I thought if I, if I came back to the river, maybe I'd get a few things back. Did you? Yeah, a bit. It just feels like a betrayal. For the first time, it feels like I've done something wrong being here, fitting in with you and your mum. It was wrong. Leaving everything. It feels like I'm, I'm leaving her. If you want my opinion, this is how it's supposed to be. Well, imagine if you went through life remembering every little detail of everything you ever did. Everyone you ever met. Your head would explode. Probably. You couldn't do anything. So, you forget. Things fade away and, well, that's how we allow ourselves to get on with life. Can I ask you something? Yeah? Do you love my mum as much as you love Bev? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And I reckon you're both very lucky. I suppose I'd better get going. See ya. <coughs> Hi, am I Hi. too late? Hello. Do you know where Steve is? Well, I thought he was with you. Oh, I wish. I had to get a cab, 15 quid. So what's happening? Nothing. We're, um, we're waiting for the groom. But Steve isn't with you. He went off somewhere to pick something up. News to me. So he hasn't turned up. David. Uh, you, you don't think that he and Steve have uh, eloped, do you? It happens. Mum, where have you been? I'm sorry, I had to see someone. It couldn't wait. Where's David? Still missing in action. I don't understand. Did he say anything to you? No, not really. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. I haven't spoken to him. I'm sure he's on his way now. Yes, yes. Well, that's what everybody says, but he's not here, is he? I, I'm going to phone him. Give me your phone. No. Come on, why don't you go in? Stop the natives from getting restless. I'll ring him now. Uh, is, um, is everything all right? <sighs> Who knows? It, it, it's all fine. Yeah, it's all under control. OK, well, we're ready when you are. Thank you. What's happened? I don't know. 
Well, if there's anything you want me to do. Then I'll let you know, OK? Well, whatever's happening, it'd better happen soon. So he didn't say anything to you? Who, David? No, Steve. No, nothing, just that he had something to do. It's not like him, is it? I mean, he didn't call. Oh, he's probably seeing a patient. You know what he's like. Yeah, he's a soft touch. He'll kick himself when he misses the champagne. You are sailing so close to the wind, Maguire. What? Rana, what's happening? Oh, uh, you don't want to know. No, no, we do, we do. Rana, you haven't heard from Steve? No, I, I thought he was here already. But he was OK, was he, when you left him? Yeah, fine. I think he was a bit cut up over the Bev thing, but, yeah, apart from that... What Bev thing? Uh, so you told her? And she was OK about it? <laughs> What do you think? I didn't hear screaming, so I took that as a good sign. Uh, very quiet in here. You open for business? That's it. I'm going to go find him. I think we need to give him five more minutes. No. This has gone on long enough. I am not going to be made a fool of. If he's not going to show up, then we'll just call the whole thing off. Are we nearly ready to go? I don't know. Why don't you ask my daughter? She seems to be the only one with information around here. I think we need to wait a bit longer. Well, maybe we should reschedule. I mean, you know, hitches, things happen. It's just that we've got another couple in about half an hour. Sorry. Where the hell have you been? I had to get a cab. It's my fault. You're dead right it's your fault. Where have you been? I, um, I had a visitor. Uh, but it's all sorted out. I had a chat with, uh, with a friend. But it's OK. I, I, they sorted me out. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. I, I'll tell you later. Can I, please? I'll tell you later. Do right, you will. So then what's going on? That is the big question. This is ridiculous. I'm calling the police. I wouldn't. You know I ain't gonna come in here without a little backup, do you? So let's just keep this between the five of us. You know what I want. Well, <laughs> I know you know. Being a... What's it called? A user. <laughs> Prescription pads, that sort of thing. And if you've got anything else, just uh, lying around. Candy, it's crashed again. I did control out delete, but. What's going on? Um. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret that. Sorry. You look beautiful. Oh. We're not too late, are we? Well, well, we'd better get this show on the road. Just stay out of this. What are you doing? I'll give you three guesses. Elise, please. <gasps> give me what I want! Then we ain't going to have a problem. I really can't do that. Oh. First of all, pharmacists check all prescriptions, so you've got no chance of getting anything that way. Secondly, we don't keep drugs here. And if you had even half a brain between the three of you, you'd have worked that out already. So, all in all, I think it's you that's got the problem. I don't believe you. My friend here... told me all about what you've got in here. All the pills and potions. Was that before or after she talked to me? Oh, she told me lots of things. Like who you are and where you live. So, as I say, it's the three of you who've got the problem. Jack, let's go. Shut it. But I don't want to get the police involved. I mean, it wouldn't look good for this place. So you just go now, and we'll forget all about this. I could be bothered. Not with this old bag. Come on. But I'd watch me back if I was you.
Are you OK? That was brilliant. Just lock the door. What are you doing? What do you think? But you said... Before you are joined in matrimony, I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows you're about to make. Marriage, according to the law of this country, is the union of one man with one woman voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of all others. So if you repeat, I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment. Why I, David Benjamin Wilde, why I, David Benjamin Wilde, may not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined it. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Are you ready, Caroline? Caroline? What's this all about? I'm sorry. Sorry about what? I don't understand. Let's go. 